I want to thank our panelists and also Alistair for a great job of uh, moderating and also bringing in a, 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 a some excellent perspectives from Europe. So you all are just a couple of minutes away from, well, I know we've had a lot of cooking analogies over the last couple of days, but only a couple of minutes away from hopefully heading out to get uh, a good lunch. Uh, um, I'm going to take, uh, um, I think, uh, uh, take you out, Greg, for some uh, Creole. Uh, but uh, um, before we wrap up, I wanted to just uh, thank a few people and summarize a few points. Points. This is our final in the set of three uh, National Academy of Medicine real world evidence workshops, and we framed it around decision aids to support key steps in developing real world evidence for regulatory purposes. Uh, my impression from the last couple of days is that the decision aids that the, uh, our uh, group uh, collectively came up with were viewed as useful. They capture many key considerations that should be included in developing real world data and choosing and implementing methods for turning it into real-world evidence. Um, while uh, in many ways basic, uh, they can be used as a framework upon which additional details can be added that are relevant to specific applications, and they can potentially address a wide range of treatment effects that are relevant for regulatory and clinical decisions, and they're just very hard to get through traditional clinical trials. And this includes <laughs> the average treatment effects among treated patients, also includes comparative uh, average treatment effects or comparative effects effectiveness um, estimates, as well as other questions that were discussed over the last couple of days about effects like determining optimal treatment rules uh, based on evidence for particular groups of patients. Again, something that's hard to do in traditional clinical trials. I think it was also helpful to see how the decisions and aids fit together. We're aiming for a systematic framework for assuring fit-for-purpose data and methods, and we had a good deal of discussion about whether the questions uh, can't be answered by traditional methods. I'd like to see more as this infrastructure get, gets developed around uh, questions like, uh, like uh, we heard yesterday about, well, if these methods could potentially be cheaper and faster, can they be used uh, more widely? Uh, questions about uh, how big or robust of an average uh, treatment effect there needs to be or a treatment effect there needs to be for uh, a regulatory approval decisions versus questions about whether particular kinds of patients should be treated one way or another and maybe whether a particular kind of doctor doctor uh, should do it uh, or not. Uh, the key issue in all of this is clarity about specification and linking to appropriate data and methods, which the tools and approaches we've discussed over the last couple of days can help support. And we are planning to revise these tools and, and uh, update them with many of the resources that you all brought to bear and discussed during the workshop uh, as we uh, move forward from here. And at a minimum, we think the decision aids can help avoid making common mistakes. Did anybody get the point about pre-specification of uh, methods uh, without analyzing the actual outcome data, pre-specification and registration. I also think this is going to help us move from the initial uses, uh, uh, the very well-developed systems now around safety questions uh, for real-world evidence to a broader set of issues, which are starting to take place, but that's mainly occurring on a case-by-case -case basis now with still a lot of time and effort around the important questions related to it depends and the devil's in the details. So steps like these tools and the discussions around them are intended to help us move from case by case to more systematic and predictable opportunities. And uh, hopefully that will start uh, coming soon. Uh, we heard a lot about the growing infrastructure that exists for real world evidence, building out Sentinel, registries, NEST, BEST, other sources uh, here and abroad into well understood, well curated, fit for purpose sources sources of data for more routine real-world evidence development, and along with fit-for-purpose analytic methods. Uh, this is starting to happen increasingly in effectiveness, just like it has over the past decade uh, in safety surveillance. And it's likely to come from a combination of the frameworks and decision aids like we've discussed at this conference. It needs to be strengthened, as you heard from our last panel, about uh, hopefully a growing range of specific uh, applications or use 
cases coming forward to FDA and you heard about uh, the willingness of the agency to engage early uh, around these applications. Also, forums like this one uh, to discuss those applications and help turn them into uh, not just frameworks, but, but a real fully developed infrastructure. So um, uh, I do want to conclude with a few thanks. Uh, whatever your preferred cooking style analogy, Creole or otherwise, it is clear that at this stage, turning all the potential real world data ingredients into a good and nutritious real world evidence meal continues to take a team of chefs. Uh, we had those uh, in putting together our panels on key considerations for real world evidence applications, uh, for um, uh, obscuring intervention allocation or not, for how tightly controlled um, uh, treatment, uh, um, treatment should be and how bias can be assessed in observational comparisons. Um, I just want to end with describing a few next steps from here. Uh, there are a couple of upcoming Duke Margolis real world evidence papers that will be presented at an October 1st public meeting. That's our second annual real world evidence public event. One of these will um, uh, highlight issues related to real world data quality. The other focusing on credibility of observational studies. Again, building on this work at the National Academy as well as work at uh, the, the clinical trials transformation initiative, uh, Get Real, and many other collab collaborations. Next steps here include the availability of the workshop materials next week uh, on the National Academy's website, and then a workshop series summary that will cover all three of the workshops forthcoming from the National Academy in the next few months. And then building on the workshops, I think you should expect to see further uh, refinements of the decision aids and some papers based on them from uh, many of us who have been involved in the planning committee and, uh, and the speakers involved in these meetings as well. Again, I want to thank all of them for their efforts. Uh, a special thanks to the FDA for sponsoring this workshop and for all of the hard work going on at the agency to advance uh, real world evidence development, and especially to all of you for contributing to it, and after all those food analogies, I do hope that everybody enjoys a fit-for-purpose lunch and some safe travels. Thank you all very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.